Have you ever wanted to scan your jewelry or small objects and be able to have a digital file for it? Well, now you can with this 3D scanner from Thunk 3D. And basically how this works is it has two cameras that will pick up the image and it uses a DLP projection off of this mirror to put structured light over it so it knows the shape of it and can build out a point cloud. But to actually use this scanner, you don't need to know any of that info I just told you because everything is really straightforward on how to actually use it. Before we can scan anything, we need to calibrate it, and it comes with a supplied calibration plate. This is held in place by some strong magnets. And in the software, you just have to click on the calibration icon and basically push go. This will start calibration, and you'll see at the lower left-hand side of the screen, the plate start moving around. And this only takes about a minute to complete. And once that's all done, it will show you the overall accuracy of the calibration, and we could start actually scanning something. They do supply you with two scanning plates. One is just a round plate, and the other is a small vise. So for my first scan, I'm going to be using the round plate, and to attach stuff to it, they supply blue tack. It's pretty much a sticky clay to hold things in place. And I'm going to be scanning this little mage miniature that I 3D printed a while ago. And I'm just going to use the blue tack on the underside of the base and then just stick it to the scanning plate. So back in the software, we can raise or lower the exposure. This will help the cameras pick up the object, and anything that turns red means it is too overexposed. So once you have that dialed in to your liking, we can start a new file. All you have to do is put in a file name, and then make sure it's on HD scanning. Everything else is going to be up to you and what you're working on. Once you push apply, it will move and take one scan of your object and display it on the screen for you. This will allow you to set your floor or the area you want to kind of cut off so it's not scanning your plate. You can move this up and down with the plus and minus arrows or just drag up and down this little bar here. And this does really help speed up your scanning process seeing that you don't have to edit out all the stuff that you don't want in your scan. And once I have that to my liking, I'm going to click the checkbox and it'll start my scan. This is a pre-programmed routine that only takes about a minute to complete. And on the software side of things, you can watch this in real time as it builds out the point cloud, and all the yellow parts are the newly scanned areas. And once that's done processing, you should have something like this. But as you can see, there's voids and just missing spots all around it. And this is just because it wasn't able to see those spots. And this is not something to worry about at all. This is totally normal, and we're going to do a second scan in a different position. I didn't just do a second scan, I did a third and fourth as well, at all different angles. So now I can put them all together and make a solid model. But before that, I have to make sure that they're all aligned so everything is in the right spots. So far in my experience with this program, it's very good at figuring out where everything needs to go on its own, and I just double check it all the way through, but you could manually point and click on things and line everything up. And there we go, everything is all in place and ready to turn into a mesh. There are some quality and smoothness settings that you can mess with on the top right hand side of the screen, but I'm going to be leaving everything at default settings for now. And then all I need to do is click the check mark at the bottom and wait. And after a few minutes, this is the final 3D model. So everything is there and it looks pretty good. It is a little muddy in spots, which I kind of blame on this being a 3D printed model that I scanned. But overall, this is totally usable and passable to me, seeing how small it is. One thing I did want to point out is the legs and robe area. It wasn't able to scan in there because it can't get all the way around it, so it just kind of filled it in. If I didn't have this glued to the base, then it would have scanned a lot better, at least in that particular area. So with all that said, and you having a, kind of an understanding of how this thing works now, here are some other scans that I did of other models that were also 3D printed. And as you can see, they have the same kind of muddiness in some spots, but also picking up a lot of details at the same time. So if you already have the file, to 3D print things and then scan them, there's no real point to this. So let's scan something that doesn't have a file that exists for it. So Leroy's Wooden Tattoos sent me some stuff, like their hand-carved brass skull logo and a wax skull ring. And seeing that they do a lot of hand-carved things, it'd be nice for them to be able to scan them into the computer and 3D print them if they wanted to make a lot of them or make modifications to them. And honestly, these both came out amazing with tons of detail and looking almost perfect. But to scan these properly, I did have to use some 3D scanning spray. A company called Vision Miner was nice enough to send me some samples so I could use them and show you in this video. And this stuff is pretty cool because whatever you spray it on will turn a matte white. And depending on which one you use, it will dissolve in four hours, leaving no trace. As an example, here's the ring without and with the spray on it. And you can see the major quality difference between the two. And to kind of sum up why this works so well, it made it a completely matte finish so the scanner can pick up everything really easily. 
versus it being shiny and it reflecting light away and not scanning properly. So for instance, if I wanted to scan this ring so I could build another ring around it, I would need to spray it first. And using this particular spray that goes away in four hours, you can give the ring back to the client and not have to keep it on hand as you're working on the other pieces. And that's just another practical reason to get a machine like this, because they are not cheap, unfortunately. So after all the shipping fees, taxes, and whatnot, you're looking at about $6,000 for this machine, which is a major sticker shock to most people because that's a lot of money. But if you have a business in mind or a business that could use one of these, I could see it paying for itself very quickly. But anyways, just for fun and for some testing, I wanted to see if I could scan some Warhammer 40K models. Seeing that these models have tons of sharp lines and details in them and little small pieces, we can see how well the scanner works and where its limitations are. On top of that, I can 3D print whatever scanned files I have and see if they are accurate enough to fit with the original parts and vice versa. When it comes to the resin printing, I'm going to be using the new Howlett One Plus resin 3D printer. This is a 4K printer and I'm going to be using some frozen 4K resin. And after about three hours, I have my first test print. So I just need to clean it all off and remove it from its supports. So here are the original parts next to the 3D printed and scanned parts. And at first glance, they look almost exactly the same. You'll notice that it's not as sharp as the originals, and some of the details are not as deep as the originals are. But overall, they look pretty good, and I might be able to tweak some settings around and get them a little bit better. And with that said, the printed parts do match up perfectly with the original parts. And I was able to build out an entire model from just the 3D printed parts. So I hope this gives you some idea of what a 3D scanner like this is capable of and what you can do with it. And I'll have links to everything in the description below if you're interested. And leave a comment if you want to see something in particular scanned or if I could do some scanning for you or if you just have questions.